morning, guys. It is 5.43 a.m. We are at Speed Vegas, and my buddy Greg, Chemblock's lead mechanic, was nice enough to bring out his personal project for us to shoot. This is the first time I've seen this since it was basically a bare shell. So cool, can't wait to shoot it. This is seriously the perfect backdrop. We got Speed Vegas here, their private track. Perfect pink sunrise. Gotta take advantage of the light. Just look at it. You know, when I see a car like this, first thing I do is I say, would y'all look at this? is it this is the one it's like what two years more than two years in the it's making been, it's been two years yeah this? two years thank you so much for bringing this oh thanks for, me for having me it's it. cool to come out and show everybody what it yeah. is yeah it's been tucked away for so long this is my friend greg and the thing is i never actually get to see him in the u.s <laughs> and the reason why we travel all over the world is because greg is Ken Block's lead mechanic. Whenever Ken is filming, whenever Ken is racing, or anything to do with Ken and his vehicles, you're there. Yep, all the time. You're there all the time, and then you have such an extensive background in rally racing too, in stage rally, right? Well, I've been rallying for ages. Was it TTE for a little bit, and then a wee bit at Pro Drive, or a long time at Pro Drive back mm -hmm. in the UK, and then moved to the States, bit of time at Vermont Sports Car, followed Ken and our team manager Derek, when mm -hmm. everything went to Ford, so, and we've been doing that for a long time now. How long have you been in the racing industry as a mechanic? Oh, 30 years. 30 years? Yeah. Okay. And how long have you been with Ken Block's Hoonigan Racing Team? Since 2011, but mm -hmm. before that at Subaru since 2005. Oh, okay. So you were with Ken when he was still in a Subaru, yes. even. Yeah. Wow. Okay. With Ken and Travis. It's so crazy to me because we became friends just over time. Everywhere I traveled, since I follow Ken a lot, you know, during his adventures. You're there too, you know? Yeah. And then we're both car guys, so kind of, we kind of hit it off. We've hung out in a lot of car parks. Yeah, we, we've, we've hung out in a lot of car parks, we've hung out a lot of pits, a lot of late nights, and a lot of early mornings. We kind of started talking, and then you told me that you have this Trans Am build, but not this one. You built another one that's so clean that actually legitimately went viral. Yeah, that, right? was, that was a surprise. That, 
It's, it's a cool thing, that one. The cool thing to me is with your other Transam build, the fire chicken, as you appropriately call it, you modernized it. You know, you gave it a modern look. You put some, your own touches, flares, a lot of power, clean interior, clean paint, everything. And you kind of just made it your own, which for some reason, I don't know why more people don't do that. And maybe that's why people really appreciated this car because it's like a modern interpretation of what a Trans Am should look like if it came out new. Maybe. I mean, I just like being stuck away in my garage yeah. shed doing whatever I like. So right. It's sort of fun. But this no, is no. not that at all. No, it's definitely. the complete opposite is, of that, yeah. right? As you put it earlier, you already have a very clean car. Now you want something that you can beat on. You get tired of looking after paint, you know, and the patina thing, that's yeah. cool, but it's it's just nice not to have to care about the outside of it and just focus on the mechanical side of it. Tell me the story about this car because the last time I saw it, it was a bare shell. You kind of told me what your concept was in building it but i just I, did, I just couldn't wrap my head around it it's one of those things where why would you do that you know <laughs> so like like tell me about the car where did you find it i found it out in a field in sandy valley just outside of vegas uh -huh. i've been sitting there for 10 years or so just full of dirt and stuff and i think a river had been through it at one point it was fairly nasty but yeah. it was cool and i wanted an early firebird because i have a i have a thing for firebirds or in general so that's that's why this happened and it just happened to be on craigslist with the patina that's on it you can't really recreate that it just <laughs> happens over time yeah it's right? it's fairly well aged. it's it's that nevada desert <laughs> yeah, that just cooked it it's tough out here so what year is the actual car 71 let's let's do a little quick walk around on, on it it's just so crazy <laughs> well i mean what was your concept with it it was kind of like a mad max look or like just uh, with, with this super low splitter. Well, there's a couple of things about that. You have to make it look nice, and it's sort of nice to make that shape look better, you know, whatever that is, uh -huh. whatever car it is. And then this one, it just, it needed it. You know, right. it, it, it was, it's not that I set out to build that splitter. Yeah. But, you know, you think, well, you look at it for a long time, you think, well, it needs this or that, and you just, you make something, you try, and you like it, and. It sort of evolved. It was never. There was never a rendering. There was never a drawing. It was just a, a just an idea. Yeah, yeah. And you never quite know where it's going to go. So let's pop the hood on this thing. So there it is. Unbelievable! Glory. Unbelievable! Yeah. <laughs> so what? Like what it. motor is it? It's a 5.3 LS out of a Silverado, mm -hmm. or a Tahoe, something like that, mm -hmm. found in the junkyard. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Really? Yeah, yeah, it's a junkyard engine. What? The okay, heck? now it's got crank and rods in it. Uh -huh. And then it's got a set of heads. So, and then plus the blower. So, how much power are you thinking it's putting out? Well, I hope it's 600 ish plus a bit, hopefully. It yeah. hasn't been on a dyno yet. Hopefully around there somewhere, but over that with a bit of luck. Just, this is. How far, how far back is the motor? It's like 18 inches. You really had to cut into it. Well, to... yeah, I wanted the engine back because of you know, a bit of weight distribution, but you need yeah. it to to fit all, everything else in the front. So it was a big hole when you first mark it out and cut the hole in the middle of the car. You sort of have to commit to it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so let's just get it out of the way. Let's just get it out of the way. This is all-wheel drive. This is probably the first all-wheel drive Trans Am ever, right? Yeah, it's one that's not on a Chevy pickup right. chassis. <laughs> what the heck? Like, it's crazy. You could see the, uh, what diff is that? It's out of a Q45, that Nissan four-door V8. Oh, okay. Uh, whatever, whatever that thing is. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It was just a big diff, and, there's, and there seems to be a few in the junkyards around here. Yeah, That's yeah. Nice. So you got a Q45 front diff. Rear diff, but yeah. Oh, rear, rear, rear diff. diff. Rear diff yeah. in the front. Exactly. What's the suspension? The suspension's all cobbled together from bits and pieces. There's Corvette subframes, Corvette uprights, then handmade everything else. The shocks are just bespoke for this. And wow. I made the, there's rocker arm suspension in it because you can't fit the shocks where the drive shafts are. So, uh, so it's, all, it's all a bit of everything. <laughs> yeah. So kind of tell me some of the other things that you did here. Like it, it, it's just the tubing, everything okay, is just so, so it's, cool. It's a factory subframe that I've cut and modified and mm -hmm. added everything to it. Uh -huh. And then it all goes through to the roll cage. So it's uh -huh. all tied into everything yeah and there's a 10 point roll cage or whatever in, the, in there i really like that you matched the patina almost you know like yeah. you went out of your way to to kind of make it look old even though it's not old uh, i sort of i wanted it to look like it like it was sort of like a barn pine like you could have just popped the hood and think 
<laughs> you know, maybe yeah. that was there. And it all sort of, it looks like it should have been there. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't look out of place. Amazing. With the blower and everything, it just looks great. I mean, the blower is just cool. Yeah. That's yeah. just cool. Yeah. So what else? The header work here is just something else. Yeah, like, there's, I mean, there's not a lot of room in there, so we had to uh -huh. point the headers forward and then make some pipes to get it out yeah. and behind the wheel. It seems like a lot of the, the parts on this car you kind of just had laying around or you just kind of put together from, from a junkyard. Like, that's kind of the cool thing about it. It's more of a backyard home garage build oh, more than anything else. I, I didn't want it to be bespoke fancy pieces, you know, because it's plenty of stuff out there that's cool. Yeah. So I tried to pick and choose from various things what I liked and what might work. And mm -hmm. then it's more or less walking around the junkyard and having a look and thinking and measuring and then hopefully it goes in. And it's easy to modify something else than it is to modify some part. What is it brake master cylinder from even? It's a Wilwood floor mounted kit. Oh, the generic okay. floor mounted thing. The rocker arms are all handmade, obviously the suspension what? and the push rods and everything. What about the radiator? Radiator is Summit Racing, thank uh -huh. you very much. Yeah. And then a couple of a couple of fans off a, I think it's off a, oh, the Corvette fans. Because mm. they, they pull quite a lot of air and they're quiet. Yeah. Not that the car's quiet. No, not at all. It's very loud. <laughs> oh, so it gets side pipes too, obviously, because yeah. they're just cool. Yeah, no, that's really cool. That's kind of an uh, interesting way for form and function well, on it, the it outside keeps, of the it car. It actually keeps all the heat out from underneath the car. A yeah. Bit, you know? Yeah. Instead of trying to root it through everything. And they sound good and they look good. Yeah, so tell me about the brakes. These are insane. Brakes? Uh, Z06 brakes off a of, you know, two, 2008 Corvette. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. With, uh, with a set of Willard discs, but standard Corvette calipers, front and back. The six pots on the front and the four pots on the back. Wow, that's some serious stopping power. It seems to stop all right. Yeah. She's a little squirrely, but it, it stops well. Tire-wise, how wide are you or all the way around? 295s all the way around. Absolutely insane. Just cause, and, but they needed to stick out a bit. Yeah, yeah. That was, that was one of the goals. Yeah, that's super cool. You did that on purpose. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's so awesome. I mean, it would right, be so nice let's... to have flares on it, but it actually looks cool without the flares. So, I really do like you know, it. It's sort of, it's like, it's not, not how everyone would do it, but it actually looks cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, you build for yourself, so yeah. that's the point. The patina on here, seriously, like, just don't touch that, know. you know? You, it's you like... You couldn't make it. So no, you couldn't. Like, ah, okay. So let's look at the back here. Oh, this is, this is one of my favorite parts here. You put a, a GTR badge, and the best part is it's not a real GTR badge. You just probably got one off eBay. Oh, it's huh? off Amazon, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That that is so funny. If someone sees that in a parking lot, parked on the street, they would just laugh. They would laugh because, like, look at this sucker. <laughs> look at this guy for putting a GTR exactly. badge on his Pontiac. Like, why would you even do that? But what they don't actually realize is there are GTR parts on this thing there's lots of them <laughs> yeah so what is, what is this about what is this your name for it for it's, formula yeah, 400r sort of name for it. it's not really but i think I, yeah it's sort of the name uh -huh. the formula 400r sort of fits uh-huh it's what it is really yeah. it's a combination of both so yeah i think that works out because this was originally called the formula 400 it was yeah this is a, actually if actually formula 400 with oh. the yeah, as factory so yeah yeah it just seemed fitting to put that on there all right so let's just pop the trunk <laughs> what the heck? What is this actually? Well, that's the control unit for the center diff. For the center diff. Yeah. So it's basically like the a Tesla system, or yeah. What? Yeah. So uh, Nissan R32 all-wheel drive system in this thing. It's, I think it's out of an R33. It's the one that had the or whatever it was with the active oh, rear diff. Oh, okay. Because it's got the second solenoid. Right. So, but yeah, it's, they're all they're similar throughout right. the years. So this one just controls the center diff. So this is a R32 GTR five-speed transmission? Yes, that's correct. Uh, with the R33 Atessa center diff control system. Control unit, yeah, system. And then I have a separate diff control unit, you know, brain for it. And you can set it to what you want and it can be active. It has a G sensor. So you Wait, and that's the actual original Nissan one? No, it's not. It's an aftermarket. Oh, okay. Because you can right. program it. This is just crazy. This is just too much. I, I'm, my, my head is getting overloaded. <laughs> but like, what else is in here? What is that thing right there? So that's the fuel tank, or one of them. Uh huh. It's got three fuel tanks just to split, move, because, the, the, you know, standard fiber, it has the fuel tank right at the back. Mm -hmm. So I tried to move the weight forward. Mm -hmm. This one's a little high, but that's life. 
And so there's two in the back seat area and then a third one up here. Oh, okay. All sort of All right. painted to look like a bomb. Because where where is the, is the stock fuel the tank located? The stock tank is under your, your Tessa pump there. Oh. So it's a lot, it's a great, it's 20 gallons hanging out the back there. Amazing. So okay, want, I, I see. To move it in. Yeah, but like this is because this is all power steering fluid, right? Yeah. That runs yeah, yeah, a Tesla ATF, pump. Yeah. Amazing. I just can't believe you got it all to work. Oh, yeah, it took a bit of sorting out. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't just fall into place, but it, it works. But it controls the rear diff also. No, this one doesn't. The, the rear diff is passive in this. It's a viscous rear diff. Oh, okay. It all could right. control the rear diff, but this one doesn't. And this, the rear diff is out of a what, 300ZX? 300ZX. Wow. <sighs> That's the coolest part of this car. That blows my mind. My favorite bit actually is the mm -hmm. dashboard because mm -hmm. it come out of a 205 Celica or Celica. Oh, okay. So, so it's, it's the dash out of one of those. And that was a whole $38 at the junkyard. <laughs> You're just bit. so proud of that. <laughs> you're proud of getting all these things that were not meant for the car. Yeah. Also, you're saving money, you're repurposing junkyard parts, but that's the, such a cool part of this and build. It's actually a really nice dash. It's a cool shape, which yeah. is nice, you know? No, it looks and great. It, fits, so it looks really good. I like neat. it. Wow. So it's it's all function inside, huh? Oh yeah, there's there's not there's not a lot of niceties in there. I actually really like the raw look. No door panels. No. Um, it doesn't it, warrant it. It doesn't ask for it. And the thing is, the last time I saw this car, you just finished the license plate thing, I think, oh, in the okay. back. Oh, that was a while ago. You know, that yeah. was a while ago. Yeah. And then you just started cutting out the transmission yeah. tunnel. Yeah. Um, but, and I think you might have had a motor sitting on some blocks. Possibly. But, like, to see it this far, a running, driving, working car is just so cool. The tunnel's all handmade. Mm. It was a ginormous hole in the car. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I remember. Out. You got a CB radio in there so There's you can kind of yell at people? Only because of Smokey and the Bandit. We have a van that has a CB radio in it so we can talk to the van. Yeah, so that's, that's awesome. Cool. You have vintage air in it, actually. There Shout is, out to these is, guys. Yeah, it's vintage air and AC and heat because it's just hot here. So you need AC. Otherwise, the car's undrivable in the summer. This is usable. <laughs> this is a usable car. So the Hoonicorn did inspire you then, right? Oh, for sure. I mean, I'm lucky enough to drive that around a couple of car parks every now and then. It's a cool thing. And I really like the idea of the big old V8 and four wheel drive. And, you know, coming from that rally background, the rally cars are super cool, but you can't beat the noise of a V8. So I like that. And then to have one for yourself is it just had to happen. That's so cool. Yeah. So you built your own. It's not a Hunicorn. No. It's a Formula 400R. Exactly. Yeah. That's the one. That's so cool. So, and that's the thing is you actually had a chance to drive the Hunicorn. You had a chance to shake it down because you were doing so much work to it, right? Yeah, to get it ready for the climb counter, we we spent a lot of time trying to get the, the oiling system right. Luckily enough, I got to go and make sure that it was okay. Yeah, yeah, so, no, good for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, that's <laughs> very, very, oh man, must be hard work, uh, poor it's, guy. It's just, a fa that is a fantastic thing, but, so I needed one for myself. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. I'm glad you built one for yourself. And it's completely different, but it's the same concept it's in a way. The philosophy of it. Yeah. But the execution is different. Oh, I like that little badge in there the badge, in the right, center. Okay, so the, the badge is cool and it's all burnt up because uh -huh. it's, it was actually a mud flap. It's the bottom of a firebird mud flap that it was on the back of it for years and years and it's all baked by the sun and it just, it looks cool. So I had yeah. to go on the dashboard. That's so cool. My fa one of my favorite bits is the, Hold on. Is the fuel tanks. I like Yeah, I really like what you did hard, with yeah, the fuel tanks. Them, but they're, they're sort of neat. Yeah. They're sort of fun to make. Yeah. And, and paint up and... But but it, it's it's kind of crazy because instead of just doing like a fuel cell or whatever, you just decided to make these yourself? Yeah. I mean, it's the space I had and it's, I like making things. Yeah. So. Yeah. I see that. <laughs> yeah. You don't get enough um, working on Ken's cars. You got to build your own exactly. projects. Exactly. Yeah, what yeah. else do you do? Yeah. You know? That's so I'm cool. a bit of a one trick pony. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. All right. Let's put it on the lift and check it out. Okay. R32 transmission, yeah. R32 center diff, yeah. Q45 rear diff in the front, yeah. 300ZX rear diff. Yeah. Corvette uprights and arms and subframe, uh -huh. front and back. Something Custom else. coilovers for that front and back. So many man hours going oh, into this. So much. What's the steering rack in this thing? Corvette, oh. but it's just moved up in different brackets. What a trip. <laughs> really, what? <laughs> Something else. I mean, like all these brackets. 
Oh yeah, there's so much. For it. So much. You wouldn't want to build another one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember seeing this transmission sitting on your floor, yeah. like this whole piece, and I thought to myself, "This is going to be some challenge to put it in there." Well, it was. Ah, uh, because this is all new metal too. All of that, yeah. That's a big. There was a big hole all the way up here. Yeah. And when there's nothing in there, you're like, "Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a big hole." It, it's crazy because this is so drastic. Like the way. It looks pretty normal looking back this way, but then when you see this drive shaft here, it's the, this is when it gets crazy. Yeah. Like it's so drastic. Oh, this turn, and then it goes here. Oh, something else. It looks so cool under here. It's cool underneath. Yeah. It's, a, it's cool look, lying, lying on the ground and looking up at it. Yeah, so let, let's start from the rear here. What subframe is this? It's a Corvette rear subframe out of a 2008 model again. It's got just some, some things that are nice about it. And then the diff is from a 300ZX. Wow. I mean, the thing is you had to do so much to get it to fit, right? There was Yeah, there's a lot of chopping and cutting and making of a couple of extra subframes. And it but all like, sort of fits in though. I mean, like... And then you, you try to match it to same thing. Yeah, I wanted to, to look like it possibly might have been that way. And the suspension pickup points and everything. Very close to, really? to how it is in a Corvette. Wow. It just about fits under there quite yeah. nicely. It's surprising actually. And what coilovers did you go with here? The QA1s. Same on the front. Different spec, but same. Uh -huh. I was trying to use the, the Corvette leaf spring, but it's just not quite strong enough. It's just crazy how much I could see that you fabricated to get everything to fit. Uh, you'd be, everything everything you see under here has been made. Right. Tunnel, every all the mounts, yeah. everything. Wow. And then the front subframe, all front, Corvette. Front, front subframe is Corvette again. Uh -huh. 2008 again, I think, or that era. And that again fits in, but it mates up to the factory 71 subframe as well wow. so i kept that because it was it was an easy piece to keep an easy piece to modify and the corvette subframe once you cut a whole lot out of the standard front subframe fits in quite well yeah it's amazing to me to see i mean like you had to modify this just to for, for this to clear just a front drive shaft I, I didn't want to offset the diff like you normally do in a four-wheel drive car uh -huh. i wanted to keep it center and this was the way to do it uh. And it, it means that all four drive shafts are the same. Right, right. And you've got quite a lot of travel. So you've, you, haven't, you, know, you haven't got that really short front shaft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So That's what you wanted to avoid. Yeah. Well, wow. Because all of these shafts are the same on all four corners. Oh, okay. So you okay. can swap them if need be. Oh, what are they out of? Is just custom? Or? Uh, they're custom, those ones. Wow, it looks so finished. It's crazy. I mean, you even went out of your way to have your urethane mounts on everything yeah well so it's a little more comfortable a little bit yeah, yeah you don't want it to be salt and if you're going to sort of use it as a road car or a hot, yeah. it's a hot rod you know yeah um you want it to be nice ish the suspension really is such a highlight for me yeah on this and you i mean felt it actually feels all right too it yeah handles quite yeah well. it, it it feels like a just a performance car, high yeah. performance car with nice coilovers on it. Yeah, exactly. So, no, I'm happy with the way it feels actually. Uh -huh. That's the first time I've been around the track. That's the thing is you, you, with all your experience, it's like you thought of everything. I tried. You know, like something as simple as the shield. I'm sure everything is functional. I hope so. Yeah, you sort of need everything that's under here. Surprisingly, there's not a lot of room, but it all fits in reasonably well. Uh -huh. You know. I cannot believe how much Bondo is I here. Know. What the. So that's some serious effort on the old Bondo scheme there. It's crazy because I bet this whole piece fell off it by did. itself. It did. <laughs> Just like it's at one time. It did. It a big chunk. <laughs> you even, still have it? Yes, I do. It's even deeper there. <laughs> well, thank you so much for showing it to yeah. me. Let's. Um, Thanks for coming and, and seeing it. Yeah, let, let, uh, it's just so cool. Honey, let's get.